What's up everybody, Noah is back here for a brand new video for you guys today. This is going to be my review of Big Mouth Season 4. Season 4 dropped yesterday, December 4th. I did not get a chance to review it uh, la last night because I finished it at like 10 o'clock at night. Uh, I watched The Mandalorian, gave my thoughts slash review on that. Did Godmothered, and I also did Mank. The Elf movie review is up now, and I will also be having Big Mouth up today, and that might be it for, for today. I gotta film some more reviews for you guys. I will be... I will be giving you a lot of Christmas, and I will be giving you a little snippet of what reviews are coming up this week as for, for the Christmas reviews. At the very tail end of this video. This is Big Mouth Season 4. Big Mouth Season 4 starts off at summer camp. At summer camp. And the, the whole gang is there except for Jesse. Uh, well, no. Jesse is also there too. She is just in a different camp. And, uh, or on, in, in the girls' camp. There we go. In, on the girls' side of, of the camp, and the boys are there. We get a Seth Rogen character in here. Ooh, he was great. I loved his character. This season goes a bit further than I was expecting it to actually go. Because you can't show child nudity, which is a great thing. Because if the MPAA did do that, they would be shut down. The movies would be shut down and people would be revolting. This is an animated show about puberty and comedy. So they get away with it. I gotta say this is the weakest season. But I still enjoyed it. I did not like a couple specific episodes. And I am, I'm going to get in into those episode titles in just a minute. Uh, let's turn this back up here. Okay, uh, I did not like... I did not like... Wow, why are you not doing anything? Uh, I did not like... Uh, the Funeral. And I did not like... Horority House. And what are you going to do? Those were very weak episodes, but the hugest period ever, that was a pretty hilarious episode. Four stories about hand stuff, that was really entertaining. I liked that they, I like that they're not afraid to go for jokes. I can take a lot of humor. I am a very humorous guy. I will crack jokes at pretty much anything. The only things that I don't touch is tragic events and religion. I do not touch on those subjects in my comedy. Because I don't find those very funny. I find them a little more offensive. But if you like Family Guy humor, yeah, you're going to like Big Mouth. This has a episode called A Very Special 9-11 Episode. Where Coach Steve's birthday is on 9-11. And he didn't know what happened on 9-11. So it's, it's, it's a touching story as well. But it's very, very funny. It is very funny. But it's also speaking to how tragic of an event it it was. And once he finds out, they gotta try and make make him feel better. That is a very good episode right there. I don't really like how 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 they're giving everybody these. Everyone's just coupling up. Uh. Kill okay, on it. Jay is back in this episode. Jay is still the same character, but he's with uh, Lola now. Which, that's a very good pairing. Those are two very, very funny characters. There's some really dark humor with Lola this season as well. There's period humor. There's poop humor. Particularly in one, 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 one episode with the poop humor in the episode called Poop Madness. Where, uh, kill on a Okay, there we go. Where Andrew hasn't gone to the bathroom 
at all at camp because he's he's too embarrassed. Well, it's just been stirring there for weeks, and there's a very out there scene that I was not expecting to see in this show. I was not expecting to see a talking, cussing turd. Yeah, if you don't know Big Mouth, this is not like Family Guy. Family Guy has done some very, very out there humor. They have been doing very offensive humor for years. And they're very good at it, at making it funny while being offensive, but not so offensive that they get in trouble. This show does not care if you're offended or not. That is the point. That is the point of the show. To to have a good time, the horrors of puberty, while delving deep into the psychological and emotional impacts on these kids, on these teenagers, while also being as graphic as possible without going over the line. And even when they do go over the line, it's still funny. They go so far as as uh, to masturbating at a grandfather's funeral. That's very dark, and it's very out there. People will be offended by that. The thing is, I was sitting back like, oh, you're actually going to do that, okay? How are you going to make this humorous? How are you going to put this in there where I'm not sitting here hmm, uncomfortable? How are you going to do this where I'm not sitting there very uncomfortable with the whole entire situation and what's going on? They do it in a way that is funny, yet the character that does it gets his comeuppance anyways. I'm trying to be as vague as possible because I could go into spoiler details, but I'm not going to. Uh, so I really like the first three episodes. I like the first three episodes where they were at at at, uh, at summer camp. The California Girls episode was, was very good. I liked about half the episodes. Well, really, really liked about half the episodes. I enjoyed most of the other ones. The only ones I didn't really care for was Nick Starr, which is where it's pretty much about Nick. 30 years in in the future, and he's a lonely game 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 show host who who is about to flee Earth because Earth is ending. But first he has to track down his perfect plus one. Will it be Jesse? Will it be Andrew? Could it be Missy? Could it be Could it be Jay? Could it be Lola? Uh, you are just gonna have to sit down and watch the episode and find out. That episode was not very funny to me. I I thought I thought it was a little more It it, it was the least well written episode. It didn't have the best jokes. I didn't feel comfortable watching the episode. I was just pretty bored by it. I didn't really laugh a whole lot. It kind of felt like they were going for an apocalyptic feel to it. And with that, it worked, but it wasn't funny. The funeral, while it is funny, it's not going to be for everybody. It is going to offend people. If you have had family members pass away like all of us have, go into this episode if you have a very, very strong sense of humor. If, if you are easily offended, do not watch the funeral. Do not watch the hugest period ever, a very special 9-11 episode. And I can do a lot of religious humor. I, I can handle a lot of religious humor, but this show went a little bit too far even for me. Because uh, I am religious, I don't really like a lot of religious humor where it's offensive. But the thing is... It didn't ruin my enjoyment of this season. It just kind of made me uncomfortable with the jokes. Now, I do wish that we would have gotten this a little earlier. Maybe during the summer or spring. But uh, last year, we we had it on October 4th. The, uh, the second season was October 5th. And then the first season was September 29th. So they waited over a year to drop the new season. 
And next year, I'm guessing it might be October, it might, it might be September, or it might be December again. I would like to see a Christmas-driven Big Mouth season. A Christmas-driven. Could you imagine how graphic and how offensive they, they, they could go with that? Just don't go too offensive. Don't bring Mary, Joseph, and Jesus into it. Give me a sexual movie. Movie. A sexualized episode about Santa Claus. About the reindeers. About Christmas trees. Give me something like that. I think that would be hilarious. Because the movies that are R-rated and our Christmas movies that do work, do it very well. Bad Santa and Bad Santa 2 are the two best ones I can come up with. Holiday is pretty mature, but it's not to the point where it's offensive. It's more like the first five minutes is as R-rated as it goes. And then the rest of it is a typical Hallmark movie with some language and some sexual references in there. Uh, Big Mouth is is full on TV mature. It is it has really graphic nudity. Graphic nudity, it it actually draws the body parts. It actually draws everything. And it it does not. It does not. It does not do what many other things do. It pulls all the punches. It gives you everything that you're expecting and more. It goes over the line many, many times. But that's why people like this show. I did think that the last two episodes and Nick Star were the worst episodes yet, but they were still fine. I'm not going to say they're good episodes. They're just fine. I'm never going to watch those episodes again, but I will definitely go back and watch the camp episodes again. And I will definitely go back and watch the first two seasons again. Season three, I don't remember a whole lot about. The The, the funniest episode to me was, oh, good Lord. I actually really enjoyed the whole first season, but uh, Pillow Talk, um, I am not going to say any of the rest of these names because, uh, yeah. But there you go. There's my short little thoughts and review of Big Mouth Season 4. The the animation is still very well done. I'm impressed that they're still doing hand-drawn animation. If they would have done this CGI, this would not have worked. This would have been flagged and just gotten in a lot of trouble. But since this is a animated show, a hand-drawn animated show, they can get away with a lot. And I'm surprised that they got away with as much as they did in the first season. They bumped it up with the second season and the third season. And the fourth season is... The worst one yet. I am very surprised that they get away with as much as they do. There's my short little review. Well, short as in 13 minutes. Review slash thoughts on Big Mouth Season 4. Stay tuned for more Christmas reviews very, very soon. Such as... A Christmas Tree Grows in Colorado. Good Morning Christmas. Five Star Christmas. And there is one more that I can't remember off the top of my head... Do I still have the list here? I'm hoping I still have the list here. I don't think I do. I don't think... Oh, do I? No, okay. That's that, that's going to drive me nuts. Uh, Christmas by Starlight. There it is. Christmas by Starlight is still coming. I will also have reviews for a Medea Christmas. Deck the Halls. Love the Coopers, The Family Stone, It's a Wonderful Life, A Miracle on 34th Street, The Original, Arthur Christmas, Jingle All the Way, and Jack Frost. I don't know about Christmas Vacation 2 yet. I might get around to that one. I think I might want to just watch that and then watch the, the first one right after it. Because I've heard number two is straight up awful. So stay tuned for more, for more movie review, guys. And I will see all of you next time.